Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a lot of news for you this morning, and most importantly, the news this morning leading is the price. That's right. We stay above a dollar twenty, and most technical analysts out here who are the experts with the charts are saying a new all-time high for 2021 is well underway. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful intro. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above. And everything that we're talking about here today, the price is on the run. You just heard it. Take a looky here, 121 and moving on up. We'll keep an eye on it this morning. Again, the technical analysts out here who are really the chart experts that have been making massive, massive kick-ass calls are saying that if we can stay above this 120 level and find the support we need, we can talk about moving to those other amazing prices that they have uh, told us about. We will get into that in another video, but head on a swivel. This is crypto you never know. By the way, this is Kava. High yield earnings right here. Compound interest on your crypto is what we're talking about. They've distributed over $28 million here. Hey, just look at some of these percentages. Look at some of these percentages. 43 plus for Bitcoin. 32 plus for Binance USD. 25 plus for uh, XRP. 70%. 70.56% for hard token. And 25 plus for Kava token. So again... I've been busy behind the scenes. I haven't had a chance to do this myself, but it's extremely, extremely exciting to me and enticing. I want to check it out. And I also know, too, that they are working with, um, uh, what is it, uh, Binance, Huobi, Kraken, and OKX. And that, to me, is pretty exciting that they are connected with those platforms as well. So you can check out and earn uh, high-yield interest, compound interest on your crypto. This is something that's very appealing to me, knowing that there's a lot of tax talk about capital gains. I don't know if I ever really want to leave the crypto space in a cash out in a conventional way. I think this may be the path for me, but you have to check it out for yourself. All right, now let's get on to the numbers this morning because the market is pumping a little bit here, and let's see if we can hold it. We're almost back to $2 trillion at $1.996 is where we are this morning. Bitcoin's climbing back and said, hey, don't forget about us. We're $53,548.98. Ethereum is back up to $2,500, and... XRP now at the number four spot. It's been back and forth between five and four spot. And we're at $1.21 right now. We're up 15.95% on the 24 hour. Now that's pretty impressive to have that much back in the price in 24 hours right here. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the range here and see where we are. We know we went way down overnight here in the 95 cents. Some even said we went as dipped as low as 93 cents. This is a range that was talked about by the uh, technical analysts, and they had told us that that was a range to pay attention to. And there's even a couple technical analysts that say we could even dip back down into that as much as you don't want to hear it before we do make that that final push to a new all-time high. So make sure you do pay attention and at least be aware of that fact. Let's go ahead and get into the news this morning. Bond Crip sends this. It's a Hall of Famer, Bond Crip. Uh, XRP whales moved 15 million coins to unknown wallet. The user transferred $15.6 million worth of XRP from Crypto.com to an unknown wallet. Well, you got me. You know what I mean? <laughs> You just can't have any privacy these days, you know. <laughs> no, it was not me. We could take that off the table. But I do want to remind people that this is a very, very big thing that happened. And I covered it over the weekend. If you didn't see it really quickly, I'll cover it. DAO law is now law of the land in Wyoming. That's right. We're talking about decentralized autonomous organizations like decentralized platform for crypto. Mm hmm. Here's the rub, and it's a good rub, I feel, because it's about accountability. And they're saying you can come here and you can make your digital autonomous organization a legitimate business or company here in our state, but you must file and attach it 
and register with a LLC, a limited liability corporation in the state. This means accountability because if you're going to have an LLC, you're going to have to have somebody's name on it. And that is accountability for consumer protection. And I like it. And I like it a lot. And I think that's about to take off pretty big in Wyoming. And if you don't remember, the XRP Ledger is a decentralized exchange. Let's see if we end up seeing any kind of LLC formed in Wyoming for that entity. That would be interesting. We already know that Ripple has a business license in Wyoming, so whether the nonprofit XRP Ledger Foundation were to create an LLC there, uh, it's something to pay attention to. All right, looking here, another one from Bond Crypt here says Binance launches stock token trading for MicroStrategy, Apple, and Microsoft stock. Each of the tokens will be tradable during traditional stock trading hours and are only tradable against Binance USD, which is also available in Kava, right? So, wow, there's so much going on here. And you can see the conventional markets that, you know, they're bringing it over into the digital exchanges to make that uh, that that crossover, just like we saw uh, with Sologenic. Sologenic's doing the same thing. Shout out to Bob Rass and Reza and the team. You know, they are doing incredible things connecting to 27 or 28 of the largest stock exchanges around the world in order to provide fractional stock offerings and tokenized offerings of stocks. That's remarkable. Looking here, this is Bond Crypt says that Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is premium is tanking. 19% off as competition weighs in, Canadian competitors scooping up the market share, U.S. ETFs just on the cusp of approval. Institutional demand for Grayscale's investment products seems to be drying up. What? Hey, let's not count Barry Silbert out. He was pretty early to this dance. Let's not just go write him off like that. Barry Silbert's a pretty smart fella. All right, 121.83. You can't help but go look at the price there, right? So, all right, let's make sure we stay on top of this. Now, this is a real shot across the bow from uh, Charlie Lee, who we interviewed in Krypton Airs, which, by the way, is very close to getting a launch date. We will keep you posted. We Dustin Plan. Van Holt, my business partner, and I had a meeting with uh, the company that has picked up the film, and we are talking to them about when they want their launch date, and it is so exciting because I can't wait for you guys to see this film, and more importantly, I don't mind saying that the story of this film, as it is told, really is speaking to where we are in this day, and it is just remarkable. It just talks about the entire crypto space. It has so many people people in it, including Charlie Lee. I want you guys to see this film, and you will very soon. We'll keep you posted. Listen to Charlie Lee here, take a shot at Bitcoin, and talk about how the network is jammed up. Listen to this. How would you describe, in a layman's terms, the difference between LTC and BTC? Yeah, well, the simple way to think about it, I always see Bitcoin as digital gold and Litecoin as digital silver. So it's kind of silver to Bitcoin's gold. So if you understand how how Bitcoin works um, very similar to gold in terms of mining and everything, Litecoin works very similar to silver. So it's it's kind of a layman's uh, Bitcoin. And so from a blockchain perspective, from a transactional perspective, maybe not from a fractional perspective, and that's, I think, one of the key differences in terms of the decimalization of Bitcoin down to eight different levels, the Satoshi are there any fundamental differences on the back end on how they operate? Listen. Charlie. Yeah, the main difference is it uses a different mining algorithm. So it has a different set, set of miners than Bitcoin. It also is faster. It has more coins than Bitcoin, has four times as many coins, and it's also four times faster. So Bitcoin transactions happen every 10 minutes. Litecoin transactions happen on average every two and a half minutes. So it's, it's easier to use, and because... Um, the Bitcoin blockchain right now is congested. Fees are really high. For Litecoin, fees are still in the pennies. So it's very mm. cheap and fast to use. W what do you mean by that, that the, it's congested, Charlie? Uh, so the Bitcoin blockchain is, is full. Um, every, every 10 minute when a block comes, the whole block is being used by, by transactions. So because of that, everyone is competing to get their transactions into the, into the next block. 
So the, the way they do that is they compete by paying more fees. So the miners will choose transactions that pay the most fees to put into the next block. So with this competition, the fees are high. Um, that's why people are paying like $10 uh, for per transactions these days. And for Litecoin, the fees are they're still very low. They're still like in the pennies or sub pennies. Now, it's great that they're in the sub pennies and pennies for transaction fees. That is certainly manageable as a fee for Litecoin. And I think the bigger part of this here is just the admission that he's telling you that the entire Bitcoin network is congested and that, you know, miners are pushing up the fees if you want to get something done and be in that immediate block for the next transaction. What he really just described is why Bitcoin doesn't work as a payment network. Any questions? There we go. Moving on. Shout out to Worldwide Exchange for that one. Michael Val Five Links is a Hall of Famer, and he says, Dan Schulman, president and CEO of uh, PayPal, said the demand for cryptocurrencies has surpassed the company's expectations. Oh, I'll say, because they've gone on and expanded to the point that they brought in Venmo on this, too. Demand on the crypto side has been multiple fold to what we initially expected. Demand on the crypto side. Uh, uh, there was a lot of excitement. We've been looking at digital forms of currency and DLT for six years or so. This is how long this has been going on and longer for most companies. But I thought it was early and I uh, thought that cryptocurrency assets at the time were much more assets than they were currency. PayPal CEO told Time Magazine earlier this year, PayPal introduced checkout with crypto services to allow its US-based customers to pay merchants through cryptocurrency assets. The financial services provider is planning to expand its crypto services globally in the coming months. And obviously we saw also that recently PayPal subsidiary Venmo has announced for several cryptocurrencies to uh, be available on their platform as well well, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, looky here. Talk about a change of tide. Look at this guy, Jamie Dimon. This is a guy that doesn't embarrass very easily. He spent years telling people that Bitcoin was trash and that he would fire anyone that worked for him that, you know, was caught selling or trading it. And this is where we're at today, right? JP Morgan is preparing to offer an actively managed Bitcoin fund to private wealth clients. Oh, brother. That approach, we need to understand, all of us together, if you don't know, and some of the OGs in the space already get this talking the book book bit, but that's what has happened here with JP Morgan. They know that they have massive amounts of influence when they say things about the markets, and they have talked down the Bitcoin market for many years now. And the entire time they've been talking down to markets, what have they been doing behind the scenes? They've been buying up the very coins that they said were no good. It's not illegal, and it's what goes on all the time. If you are someone who has spent years investing in stocks by listening to the mainstream media, you probably have a feeling in your belly at times that's like, why do I always lose in the stock market or never see the gains that I hope to because I'm listening to the people on mainstream media and then when I buy those things, I don't seem to get the returns that they seem to scream about. Well, because you've been listening to someone who's been talking their book and while you do the thing they talk about, they've been doing in the opposite and it's not illegal. Make sure you pay attention, know what you hold. All right, here we go. Some more news here. Let's step it up to moving around the world. Some of China's largest state banks are actively promoting the digital yuan as superior means of payment to the country's two leading payment providers, Alipay and WeChat Pay. And this is just more integration with the digital dollar in China. That's what we're talking about here. And they've been the front runner so far. And I think it's great because I know that no one, governments, countries around the world, want to see China lead the pack here. So at some point, I think you're going to see the script get flipped. That's what we're going to see. Compliments of Mac Attack XRP from Hall of Famer Michael Val Five Links. Bank Dufour has teamed up with Ripple to drive real-time payments to India, being one of the first banks in the Omen Sultanate to join Ripple Global Payments Network. You know, this just confirms for me the work that Ripple has done. They've done the long work in the front end, building the relationships, building the market infrastructure, doing the testing and the pilot testing. You know, you don't get this kind of movement from banks. 
You don't get this kind of movement for banks to new technology. Banks are not innovators. They're scared to let people in their ecosystem because there can be, you know, theft and fraud and all of these things, right? Ripple has done the work. I will share a little story with you from Swell 2019. I was talking to a gentleman who was there from one of the largest banks in India. And I said, you know, this may feel silly because I do see 800 of the largest customers from around the world here today. I said, but I've flown halfway around the world, and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't ask the obvious question. Are you guys going to use XRP at some point? And the gentleman I was talking to dropped his fork, and he says, are you kidding, my friend? What do you think we're here for, the food? We're all going to use it. That's what he said to me. And I was like, thank you very much for your candid answer. Okay, Missouri Tofot Bank goes live with Finestra FS today, announced that Missouri Tofot, I think it's Tofot, I don't want to get hung up on it. The third largest bank in Israel has chosen its prepackaged payment solution, Fusion Payments to Go, and I think this is more evidence of where banks are going. And I think I opened this article already, but Finesse announced today that the bank, the third largest bank in Israel, has chosen its prepackaged payments. And what we need to understand here is Wills being prepared for changing regulations such as ISO 20022. Yeah, remember this? The world is converging on a new global standard. Standard. It is ISO 20022, the de facto global data standard for modern payments. Say that five times fast. To help enable this step in global interoperability and meet the evolving needs of our customers, Ripple is now part of the ISO 20022 standards body. The first member, in fact, focused on distributed ledger technology. How about them apples, right? And then right here, we see a reminder here that the SEC claims Ripple did not disclose data vital to determining securities law violations. Jorge Tenrero stated that Ripple did not provide any crucial documents for working out whether the firm committed $1.3 billion worth of securities violations. Well, let me tell you, it is the 26th of April today, and in four days... They're going to start working on that notion right there. There is another telephonic conference that will be happening between Ripple and the SEC. And here is the number and the information date and time, April 30th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And there will be 4,000 slots for callers that will be listening in. They have expanded that from what it previously was, so some of us can attend. All right, there it is. I will remind you as a disclaimer, do not record in any way or share that information. It is illegal. All right, there it is. And before we get out of here again, remember, big stuff going on at Unstoppable Domains. They are unstoppable, ladies and gentlemen. And they got another round of top premium domains becoming available starting tomorrow. And it's going to be great. It is going to be in the business category, Corey. And this is the finance category that we're looking at from last week. Make sure you check it out. Cash.crypto is still available. Somebody's got the cake for that. That's incredible. Cash.crypto. If I had it, I'd own it. I could tell you that. And then looking down here, so many others. Dollars.crypto is even more affordable, and that's a great one. Uh, there was one down here I looked at the other day. Where is it here? Oh, bonds.crypto. All-time high.crypto. That's pretty amazing. Uh, great for a charting company, right? Uh Uh-oh, what kind of price we got moving here? Let's go take a look at it real quick before we get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. uh Uh-oh, $1.22 before we leave. Ladies and gentlemen, we stay above this. It could be sunny days. That's going to do it for me. Hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Share with somebody you know. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We're so close to 100,000 subscribers. Let's go ahead and hit that number and get past it. I can't do it without each and every one of you. They are trusted vetted links in the description and comment section. Make sure you check them out and I'll catch all of you on the next one.